Welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard and if you are new to my channel please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button. This is a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Colorado and I have family members. This is their first year gardening so we're really excited about showing you how they're building their own raised bed and starting their first season gardening. So I want to take you along and show you what we're doing. We're working on our second bed right now, so we're right in the middle of constructing it. Okay, so we just got through constructing the second bed, so we're going to go ahead and move the bed. Okay, so we have our second bed constructed right next to our first bed. So we're gonna continue working. Okay, so now we have um, put cardboard at the bottom of the raised bed. We're starting to layer. This will allow us to make sure we have enough natural base underneath the soil once we add the soil. And this will keep the grass from growing under the, uh, from, uh, from beneath the raised bed into the bed, into the soil. Completed layering the raised bed. We got enough wood chips and leaves and sticks at the base of the raised bed, which would uh, go through a, a de decomposition and um, 
it, the cardboard will eventually break down and it will smother the grass to keep the grass from growing up underneath the soil. So right now we're just going to add the soil right on top of the materials that is going to eventually decompose. Just want to let you know we're using nature care organic raised bed soil so it's definitely nutrient nutrient rich definitely organic and this is one thing I would recommend is when you are putting in a raised bed you want to really pay attention to your soil you want to make sure you're using as much organic material as possible so just wanted to bring that to your attention as well wanted to bring that to uh, to your attention this is what I love about gardening is the joy of, of what it helps your whole um, gardening experience as well as helps bring the anxiety down there's old saying about one plane in the soil so what we've done now is added the soil on top so we got about four inches of soil right now so we have just got through going through the process of building a raised bed and also building the soil base and adding the soil to the raised bed so currently we are now ready to start planting I'm just going to just try to break up some of these clumps right now so that we can have a smooth soil. Okay. Okay, there you have it. My nephew Corey and I have just completed constructing a raised bed, showing you how to use natural materials from your yard. Nothing's going to waste, another form of practicing permaculture. So we use sticks, we use leaves from the fall, and all kind of natural organic materials, as well as making sure we're adding organic soil for the raised bed, specifically for raised bed. Here's another one we just completed. 
We have not planted these uh, crops yet. We just have them positioned. And so we're gonna right now start planting our two rows of um, tomatoes. What we have here is a tomato cherry Baxter bush. This was started from seed April 20th. And we're planting two of them in the bed. We also have two other bell peppers that were started from seed. And then we have two other bell peppers that was purchased. So without further ado, we're gonna start planting. like to add, I went on ahead and just positioned the pot right here in the soil. So basically it digs the hole for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. And look, it's got a good root system. And I'm gonna go ahead and plant that. And you see how it fits right in? So it takes all the work out. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and tag it like that. And here we have another one. This is another one that I grew from seed that I provided to my prime um, gardeners. And as you can see, it's already, the soil, the hole is already in place. So I'm just gonna take this out. Really good root system. And go ahead and plant it. Okay. So now I've got two of the cherry tomatoes in. Nice. So now we're going to start with the bell peppers. Oh no, I don't need that. So you can see I got the hole dug by just placing the pot in like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the pot and go ahead and plant it. This one was purchased by, um, yeah, I can go ahead and use this. My first time gardeners went on ahead and purchased this one, this bell pepper plant. So this is our organic Bonnie red bell pepper. And the good thing about this is that it's already in its, uh, I need scissors. It's already in a biodegradable pot so we're not going to have to take it out of the pot. We're just gonna take the plastic off like this. And as you can see, it's already in this biodegradable container. So we're just gonna place it in there like this. And we're going to leave the tag on it so we know exactly what we're planting. Okay, so I'm gonna move around the bed here. And this particular bell pepper plant was store bought by our first time gardeners. And again, it's in its biodegradable container. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the plastic off like this. And this is organic green bell pepper. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the soil just like this. Okay, and then last but least, um, we're gonna go ahead and plant the bell pepper that I started from seed right here. It's got a good root system. Oh, by the way, this was the one that was grown in eggshells. If you go back and check out my video on starting seeds in eggshells to try to help increase the, uh, the calcium intake. Um, you'll be able to understand the importance of germinating seeds, especially bell peppers and tomato seeds in eggshells. So you don't end up in, with blossom end rot. Okay, there you have it. So we have therefore planted two 
cherry tomato plants started from seed, two bell pepper plants started from seed, and two organic bell peppers uh, store bought. We are going to eventually put wood chips around the um, top of the bed so we can hold in the moisture. Keep in mind these wood chips are aged. Now I get a, hear a lot of comments about wood chips pull nitrogen out of the soil. Yes, that's if the wood chips are fresh and that's if you push them right too close to your seedlings. But because these wood chips are aged, they're about two years old, the wood chips are gonna act as a great insulate, uh, uh, um, insulating the soil so it can stay moist. As, and then over a period of time, the wood chips will um, decompose and add nutrients into the raised bed. So right now, our first time gardeners have built their first raised bed. All right, congratulations. They've already have four seedlings in the bed that was started from seeds and two organic seedlings. So we're gonna go ahead and start planting the second bed. I also started some carrots from seedlings that I gave the first time gardener. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in a pot. And the same with this one. This is a carrot red coral chatternay. Okay, so we decided to grow these carrots in pots. So we're gonna put them over here. Now what we've also did is position the plants that we're gonna put in this bed. So what we have here is two cucumber plants. We have um, two zucchini squash. And then we have the herbs in the back, basil, thyme, and cilantro and that's what's gonna be grown in this bed. The uh, first, time home, uh, first time gardeners do have a sprinkler that will be able to sprinkle the beds on a, on a uh, scheduled watering. So that's gonna take a lot of the um, guessing um, of when to water. Once they start monitoring how often the soil dries out with the wood chip covering to hold in the moisture and keep the soil from drying out, then um, they'll be able to schedule the watering. They did an excellent job of determining the sun exposure as to where to put the beds at. So the uh, first time gardener determined what eastern sun exposure they're getting in the morning, the southern exposure they're getting in the afternoon, as well as determining how much of the cottonwood tree was gonna provide shading as well as the late afternoon sun. So I think that was very wise to make that determination and where to plant their bed. They are going to continue adding beds to their yard until they can pretty much get a good food forest. They are also looking at planting fruit trees, fruit shrub, uh, uh, bl uh, uh, blueberries, all kind of shrubs and, sh and, and fruit trees. And I'm really proud of them because this is a time where you do want to be able to grow your own food. You know what you're getting. Your foods are natural. Uh, when I was growing up, there's no such thing as organic. Food was just basically natural. natural. Um, this is an exciting opportunity to see the fruits of your labor and harvest your own fruits and vegetables and taste the goodness of tree and ripened fruits and vegetables. So we're gonna go ahead and water this first bed. We're gonna add wood chips later on. I want to 
introduce you to the new gardener. Hey guys. Who's interested in starting to grow their own food and actually eventually start a food force. So I want to ask them a couple of questions. Corey, what inspired you to start growing your own food, building a raised bed, understanding the sun exposure, and really getting started this season? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that have inspired me with recent events, right? I, I remember going to the grocery store just a month ago and the food was just off the shelves, right? Mm. Everything was taken and that just got my mind thinking. There's a reason I have a big backyard and I want to make sure I put it to use where it's not just a bunch of grass, right? Um, I want to grow my own food. I get concerned with what type of pesticides are out there. Mm. You, you hear everything on the internet, right? So it's just nice to know, like, I grew my food. I'm using organic material. Everything that you see is, you know, part of my lawn that I can bring to my garden. And then it goes into my house and into my body, right? Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, what are some of the concerns you are having uh, embarking upon this new project? Yeah, I mean, there could be a lot to it. I, I have big ambitions for what I want to do. I want to grow for my immediate family and be able to share with my neighbors and friends because I have that type of yard to be able to do it. So we're going to do it in steps. But my biggest concern was like planning it all out, right? Um, I'm so thankful for your help today, right? There's a couple things to think about. What are the type of materials you need to use? Um, you know, the strategy and structuring of you know, like where light comes in and I got to think about watering because yeah, I, I would like to set up some type of automation. So mm -hmm. thankfully I have my own irrigation system mm -hmm. to help watering. But that, that's some big concerns, right? Because I have big ambitions. So you've been able to help me kind of map out that whole plan. And that, that's why I'm thankful for your help today. And I look forward to continue growing. We have two beds and I plan to get six to eight more. All right. There you have it folks, growing your own food in your own backyard and not just in my backyard, but I'm happy that I'm inspiring other family members to start growing their uh, own food in their own backyard. So thank you for coming along and um, I'm excited to share this uh, journey with you and stay tuned for more um, videos on how you can learn how to grow your own food in your own backyard and tips as well.